Chapter Eleven of Sylvie and Bruno by Lewis Carroll. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter Eleven, Peter and Paul. As I was saying, the other professor resumed. If you'll just think over any poem that contains the words such as. Uh, peter is poor said noble paul and i have always been his friend and though my means to give are small at least i can afford to lend how few in this cold age of greed do good except on selfish grounds but i can feel for peter's need and i will lend him fifty pounds how great was peter's joy to find his friend in such a genial vein how cheerfully the bond he signed to pay the money back again we can't said paul be too precise tis best to fix the very day so by a learned friend's advice i made it noon the fourth of may but this is april peter said the first of april as i think five little weeks will soon be fled one scarcely will have time to wink give me a year to speculate to buy and sell to drive a trade said paul i cannot change the date on may the fourth it must be paid well well said peter with a sigh hand me the cash and i will go i'll form a joint stock company and turn an honest pound or so i'm grieved said paul to see mankind the money shall of course be lent but for a week or two i find it will not be convenient so week by week poor peter came and turned in heaviness away for still the answer was the same i cannot manage it to-day and now the april showers were dry the five short weeks were nearly spent yet still he got the old reply it is not quite convenient the fourth arrived and punctual paul came with his legal friend at noon i thought it best said he to call one cannot settle things too soon poor peter shuddered in despair his flowing locks he wildly tore and very soon his yellow hair was lying all about the floor the legal friend was standing by with sudden pity half unmanned the tear-drops trembled in his eye the signed agreement in his hand but when at length the legal soul resumed its customary force the law he said we can't control pay or the law must take its course said paul how bitterly i rue that fatal morning when i called consider peter what you do you won't be richer when you're bald think you by rending curls away to make your difficulties less forbear this violence i pray you do but add to my distress not willingly would i inflict said peter on that noble heart one needless pang yet why so strict is this to act the friendly part however legal it may be to pay what never has been lent this style of business seems to me extremely inconvenient no nobleness of soul have i like some that in this age are found paul blushed in sheer humility and cast his eyes upon the ground this step will simply swallow all and make my life a life of woe nay 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 peter answered paul you must not rail on fortune so you have enough to eat and drink you are respected in the world and at the barber's as i think you often get your whiskers curled 
though nobleness you can't attain to any very great extent the path of honesty is plain however inconvenient tis true said peter i'm alive i keep my station in the world once in the week i just contrive to get my whiskers oiled and curled but my assets are very low my little income's overspent to trench on capital you know is always inconvenient but pay your debts cried honest paul my gentle peter pay your debts what matter if it swallows all that you describe as your assets already you're an hour behind yet generosity is best it pinches me but never mind i will not charge you interest how good how great poor peter cried yet i must sell my sunday wig the scarf pin that has been my pride my grand piano and my pig full soon his property took wings and daily as each treasure went he sighed to find the state of things grow less and less convenient weeks grew to months and months to years peter was worn to skin and bone and once he even said with tears remember paul that promised loan said paul i lend you when i can all the spare money i have got ah peter you're a happy man yours is an enviable lot i'm getting stout as you may see it is but seldom i am well i cannot feel my ancient glee in listening to the dinner bell but you you gamble like a boy your figure is so spare and light the dinner bell's a note of joy to such a healthy appetite said peter i'm well aware mine is a state of happiness and yet how gladly could i spare some of the comforts i possess what you call healthy appetite i feel as hunger's savage tooth and when no dinner is in sight the dinner bell's a sound of ruth no scarecrow would accept this coat such boots as these you seldom see ah paul a single five-pound note would make another man of me said paul it fills me with surprise to hear you talk in such a tone i fear you scarcely realize the blessings that are all your own you're safe from being overfed you're sweetly picturesque in rags you never know the aching head that comes along with money-bags and you have time to cultivate that best of qualities content for which you'll find your present state remarkably convenient said peter though i cannot sound the depths of such a man as you yet in your character i found an inconsistency or two you seem to have long years to spare when there's a promise to fulfil and yet how punctual you were in calling with that little bill one can't be too deliberate said paul in parting with one's pelf with bills as you correctly state i'm punctuality itself a man may surely claim his dues but when there's money to be lent a man must be allowed to choose such times as are convenient it chanced one day as peter sat gnawing a crust his usual meal paul bustled in to have a chat and grasped his hand with friendly zeal i knew said he your frugal ways so that i might not wound your pride by bringing strangers into gaze i left my legal friend outside you well remember i'm sure when first your wealth began to go and people sneered at one so poor i never used my peter so and when you'd lost your little all 
and found yourself a thing despised i need not ask you to recall how tenderly i sympathized then the advice i poured on you so full of wisdom and of wit all given gratis though it is true i might have fairly charged for it but i refrain from mentioning full many a deed i might relate for boasting is a kind of thing that i particularly hate how vast the total sum appears of all the kindnesses i've done from childhood's half-forgotten years down to that loan of april one that fifty pounds you little guessed how deep it drained my slender store but there's a heart within this breast and i will lend you fifty more not so was peter's mild reply his cheeks all wet with grateful tears no man recalls so well as i your services in bygone years and this new offer i admit is very kindly meant still to avail myself of it would not be quite convenient you'll see in a moment what the difference is between convenient and inconvenient you quite understand it now don't you he added looking kindly at bruno who was sitting at sylvie's side on the floor yes said bruno very quietly such a short speech was very unusual for him but just then he seemed i fancied a little exhausted in fact he climbed up into sylvie's lap as he spoke and rested his head against her shoulder what a many verses it was he whispered End of chapter 11